I'm Malka Siegel, and today I'm going to be talking about atomism and atomic theory. How do we know that atoms exist? Atoma is Greek for indivisible or unbreakable. In ancient Greece, an atom meant the smallest indivisible particle. Philosophers who believed in atomism did so more from a philosophical point of view than from a scientific point of view. They weren't using scientific theory to hypothesize and test ideas. Instead, they were really using thought exercises to examine such ideas conceptually to see if they made sense. Democritus is considered to be the father of modern science. Let's hear from the father himself about his theory of atomism. <clears throat> I am Democritus. I was born in Greece, around 460 BCE. My teacher, Elizabeth, and I have done extensive work in the field of atomism. As a natural philosopher, my main interest is in finding the cause of things, not the purpose. To paraphrase Galileo, who lived much later than I did, I'm interested in how the heavens go, not how to go to heaven. Here's my theory about what the world is made up of. There are these tiny, indivisible things called atoms. Between atoms, there's empty space called void. Atoms are always in motion. Motion means that an atom changes its position to take up space in the void, leaving behind a void where it once was. The existence of atoms explains how motion is possible. Before I came along, another philosopher named Parmenides believed that I am Parmenides. I think that everything is just one constant, unchanging thing that is combined together. One solid unity of existence. Motion is just an illusion of the senses. Motion isn't possible, because in order for one thing to move somewhere else, there must be nothing in the new space. It is impossible for nothing to exist. By nature, nothing does not exist. Since it is impossible for nothingness to be, a thing that exists cannot possibly enter the space that contained nothing because it is impossible to contain nothing. To avoid that logical headache, I came up with the idea of atoms and void. Void is a space wherein nothing exists. You can ask how there exists something which means that nothing exists inside of it, but just think about it. Void is like empty space. Atoms are the tiny particles that make up the world. In order for an object to move on the macro level, the atoms at the micro level are moving from the spaces where they were into the void. That's atomism in a nutshell. It's about how motion exists and how things are made up of these teeny tiny little indivisible particles. In our journey from atomism through atomic theory, we'll next move on to John Dalton. Hello, I'm John Dalton. I was born in England in 1766. If you're wondering why the colors are different here, it's because John Dalton was colorblind. Here are the main elements of my atomic theory. <laughs> elements. Elements are made up of extremely small particles called atoms. Atoms of any specific element are all completely identical, with the same properties, characteristics, and the like. Atoms of different elements are different from each other. Atoms are indivisible and cannot be created or destroyed. You can combine atoms of different elements together in whole number ratios to get compounds. In chemical reactions, atoms are put together, or split, or rearranged. My atomic model is known as the billiard ball model. That's because I believe that atoms were just these little, complete spheres that looked like billiard balls. The next scientist we're going to meet on our path from atomism to atomic theory is J.J. Thompson. I'm J.J. Thompson, and I'm about to change the way you understand the world. I'm a British physicist, and I was born in 1856. I discovered the electron. Until my experiment, everyone thought that the smallest possible particle was the atom. That's what we've been discussing all along, right? Well, I found by using a cathode ray tube that cathode rays actually weighed much, much less than atoms. 
I did this by measuring how far the rays were deflected when I added magnetic field and electric field. The results of my experiment showed that cathode rays are many, many times lighter than atoms. It also showed that they had this same smaller mass no matter what atom they came from. My conclusion, therefore, is that cathode rays are made up of very, very light, negatively charged particles. I called them something else, but they became known to you as electrons. By changing the magnetic field and the electric field that I was using to deflect the cathode rays, I was eventually able to calculate the charge to mass ratio of the particles. I propose, therefore, that atoms are divisible. My new model of the atom is called the plum pudding model because it looks like a plum pudding. You have the atom composed of a sphere of positive charge and embedded inside it are smaller bits of negative charges. Here's the math I used to calculate the charge to mass ratio of the electron. JJ Thompson discovered the charge to mass ratio of the electron. Let's see how he did it. Thompson created a magnetic field of strength B that was perpendicular to the direction of the electron's motion as the electrons passed through the cathode ray tube. Because the electrons were passing through a magnetic field that was perpendicular to their direction of motion, it caused the electrons to move with circular motion. By setting the magnetic force equal to the centripetal force required to move an electron in a circle of radius r, we can begin our calculation. The magnetic force is q times v times b. q is the charge of the electron, v is the velocity of the electron, and b is the strength of the magnetic field. The centripetal force is equal to m times v squared divided by r, where m is the mass of the electron, v is again the velocity of the electron, and r is the radius of the circle in which it travels. We set these two equal because the source of the centripetal force is the magnetic force. So now we have QVB equals MV squared over R. We can now solve for the charge to mass ratio by solving for Q over M. We divide both sides by VB and by M. So we get Q over M equals V over BR. One thing that Thomson still didn't know after performing this calculation was the speed of the particle, V. In order to solve for that, he introduced an electric field in addition to the magnetic field. What he did with that was set them so that the pull from the electric force was equal to the pull from the magnetic force but in the opposite direction which caused the electrons to pass straight through the tube instead of being pulled in one direction or the other. So now, let's add in electric force to our list here. The electric force is equal to the charge of the electron times the strength of the electric field, E. By setting the electric force equal to the magnetic force, we can then come up with an expression for the velocity. We'll take QVB equals QE. Now if we divide both sides by Q and by B, we get V equals E over B. So, when the electrons pass straight through after the application of an electric field and a magnetic field, their velocity was equal to the electric field divided by the magnetic field. If we plug in this expression for V into our expression for Q over M, that will give us Q over M in terms of other variables that we actually know. Let's just plug in for V right here. So we get Q over M equals 
E over B squared R. And that is how J.J. Thompson solved for the charge to mass ratio of the electron by using his cathode ray tube. Thank you for watching this brief history tracing modern atomic theory from Democritus through Dalton to Thompson. Let's review quickly what we learned today. First, we met Democritus, the founder of atomism. Democritus came up with the idea that everything is made out of atoms, tiny indivisible particles. Then we met John Dalton, who was one of the first scientists to work on the atomic theory. Dalton presented scientific reasons for the existence of atoms, which was different than what Democritus proposed, which was more of a thought exercise to counter Parmenides' question. Finally, we met J.J. Thompson, who discovered the electron and changed the way we understand atoms today. Thanks for watching.